Guten Tag, A Push. We have a new video today. It's the Bee's Knees by the Big Cheese himself, Mr. Linegar. Let's make history today as we jaw over Unit 3, Day 3. But first, let's do our daily punishment. Becoming a vegetarian is one big mistake. <laughs> mistake. <laughs> Key terms for today are Old Ironsides, Andrew Jackson, William Henry Harrison, the Battle of Fort McHenry, the Battle of New Orleans, the Hartford Convention, mm -hmm. the Era of Good Feelings, the Treaty of Ghent, the Rush Bago Agreement, the Tariff of 1816, the American System, yeah, Henry Clay, the Panic of 1819, the Land Act of 1820, the Missouri Compromise, H. Clay, and the Talmadge Amendment. We're going to go over the progression of the War of 1812 and the domestic impact of the war and American life after the War of 1812 during the era of good feelings. So the War of 1812 was America versus Britain. It was fought in North America, United States, and Canada. It was fought on both land and sea. The army did pretty trash. The army was poorly trained militiamen. Remember, Jefferson got rid of most of the army when he was president. A lot of the generals were leftovers from the Revolutionary War. They lacked vision and imagination. We didn't have a military college at this time. The U.S. will invade Canada again. We like to do that. And again, we failed. Uh, the U.S. Navy will be more skillful. They had better gunners. Their Navy was uh, not impressed, unlike the British Navy, which had a lot of impressed sailors. The U.S. did a lot of their best battles and their naval battles when they, when they fought the British in the Great Lakes. Uh, one of the most famous uh, American ships was the USS Constitution, which fought the British in the Great Lakes. They were called Old Ironsides. They're wooden ships that had iron holes in some parts. Some of the Native Americans will side with the British. If you remember, the uh, Shawnee had already attacked America uh, in the Battle of Tipper Canoe. In the Battle of Thames, again, the Native Americans will uh, fight the Shawnee. This time, William Henry Harrison will defeat Tecumseh in the Battle of Thames. Another Native American group that will attack the Americans during the War of 1812 is the Creeks. And Andrew Jackson, who was a plantation owner, uh, will defeat the Creeks. This is when he's going to start to become famous, and he'll become president after this. Americans love good war heroes. This shows a lot of the battles uh, in War of 1812. As you can see, most of them were fought in the northern part of the country, uh, in the Great Lakes area. You see a lot of battles in the Great Lakes. Uh, there was a couple battles uh, around Washington, D.C., although they just kind of burned the capital. It wasn't really a battle. Just, oh, God, oh, God, our capital's getting burned down. So, okay, guys. In 1814, the British will advance on Washington, D.C., they will capture Washington, D.C. The Americans will uh, retreat. They'll burn the White House down, along with parts of the Capitol. The British fleet at Fort McHenry will try to attack a fort, which is in modern-day Maryland. It's called Fort McHenry. Uh, the Americans will actually push the British back, back from this. It really is a pretty small battle, the Battle of Fort McHenry. The reason why it's kind of, you know, rememberable is... Uh, Francis Scott Key was there, and this is where he wrote the Star Spangled Banner uh, when he saw the British, you know, defeated. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail by the twilight heap. You know that song. At this time in 1814, Napoleon will be defeated, so Americans can be left all alone against Britain. Uh-oh. But... This was kind of a pointless war, and starting all the way in like 1813, 1814, America and the British were trying to have a nego negotiation to uh, end the war. Britain uh, is going to try to invade the Louisiana area. They're going to land an army in New Orleans. They'll attack with 8,000 soldiers, but they'll do a frontal at attack. Uh, they're going to be uh, fighting against Andrew Jackson, who we talked about before. He'll be leading in an entrenched position, and he will push the British back. 2,000 British people die. That's like 25%. That's a huge amount of casualties. 
This is the worst defeat of the war for the British. Andrew Jackson will become a hero. This will restore American honor. This battle was important, but it wasn't important, and here's why. By the time the Battle of New Orleans happened, America had already signed, uh, had already signed the Treaty of Ghent with Britain. The Treaty of Ghent just went back to the status quo. It returned all both territories both countries had. Uh, the peacemakers in the Treaty of Ghent were John Quincy Adams and my boy Henry Clay, who we've already talked about a couple times so far. He's going to be super important for the next 30 years. So even though the Battle of New Orleans was like technically the battle was fought after the war had already ended. They didn't know it back then. And we had done pretty bad for the war, so it kind of restored our pride. So that's why it's kind of important. It's all like, you know, a feel-good thing. This was called the, uh, after the War of 1812, it's going to be called the Era of Good Feelings. There's only going to be one political party. There's going to be renewed nationalism. This happens after probably the worst war in American history. And there'll only be one political party. And let's talk about why there's only one political party. We talked before about the Democratic Republicans and the Federalists. The Federalists are from New England. They rely on trade with Britain. The New Englanders are going to ve vehemently oppose the war. Some of the uh, New England states will meet in Hartford, Connecticut, and the Hartford Convention. Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island will send delegates. It's not really too radical. They weren't talking about seceding and forming their own country. But this convention happened right during the same time as the Battle of New Orleans, so it made these people look like traitors. And this is going to really lead to the death of the Federalist Party. The Federalist Party really dies after the Hartford Convention, where they're really kind of connected with treason and not being loyal to America. Hmm. Here's a picture of the era of good feelings. Look at that. America is so happy. Let's talk about some latter policies of James Madison and James Monroe. Madison, after the War of 1812, is going to realize maybe it would be a good idea if we actually had money. So he's going to recharter the second national bank. He's going to pass something called the Rush Bago Agreement, uh, which was an agreement with Britain. It will demilitarize the Great Lakes. So stop putting ships in the Great Lakes. He's going to support the tariff of 1816. During the War of 1812, America couldn't buy, could not buy manufactured goods from Britain. So America had to rely on their infant industries. America is going to start to have their own factories during this time. People were worried that after the War of 1812 ended, our little infant industries will die because they won't be able to compete against cheap British goods. So we'll start putting tariffs for protection, protection of American industries. And this is the first protective tariff in American history. Henry Clay, who was the Speaker of the House, has a three-part economic system. He wants a national bank. Bam, got that. A protective tariff, bam, got that. And he wants internal improvements. He wants to build roads throughout states. He wants to build like uh, canals, bridges to connect the country. It's a very nationalistic system. It's kind of similar to Hamilton's system also. Clay's pretty legit. Madison will support all these except for the internal improvements, which he thought were unconstitutional. When James Monroe becomes president, He's going to inherit something called the Panic of 1819, which was caused by uh, it was caused by the War of 1812 ending. A lot of times, wars can help out the economy. Also, there was over speculation for like American land and stuff. Uh, this was the first big panic or like recession, as we call it today in American history. It's going to last for two years, from 1819 to 1821. Monroe will try to. Uh, allow for there to be cheaper land for people to move westward. So under him, Congress will pass the Land Act of 1820 as well. Here is Henry Clay's brilliant American system. National Bank, check. Protective tariffs, check. Internal improvements, nope, not yet. There is going to be one other big uh, controversy during this time, and that is going to be the Missouri Compromise. So, there is going to start to be sectional disputes over slavery during this time. Missouri is going to want to become a state, uh, but Missouri was a slave state. Some people in Congress, especially Northerners, did not want any more slaves. So, they're going to say that, uh, so Congress is going to pass the Talmadge Amendment, which says that there will be no slaves in Missouri, and there will be a gradual emancipation of the children of slaves in Missouri. 
This is obviously going to upset the Southerners. Uh, this will not pass the Senate, but it's going to start a huge uh, controversy. The Southerners demand Missouri becomes a slave state right away. Uh, no ifs, and and buts. The Northerners don't want Missouri to be a state. Uh, some people support the Talmadge Amendment, so now we have a slavery dispute. And Henry Clay, who was the Speaker of the House and also is known as the Great Compromiser in American history, he's going to propose a three-way compromise. Missouri will become a slave state. Check, slave state. Maine will become a free state, so now it's going to still be even. We'll have even amount of slave states and free states. And from now on, there'll be no slavery north of 3630, which is this line right here. So Missouri was north of 3630, but further on in the future, there'll be no slavery north of 3630. And this, the Missouri Compromise will pass, and it's going to uh, end the whole sectional dispute for now. But this whole slavery dispute is going to be going on for the next 40 years, guys. All right, kiddos. That's all I have for you for today. Until next time. Do, 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 deuces. Deuces, deuces, yeah.